excuse she gets when she dares to put her head above the parapet when she gets involved in this debate by saying that she does think there should be women in these places is devastating. Are you going is to the Sunday room? Yeah, absolutely right. right and this is what we've, what we've lost sight of. <laughs> It's the dirty roll. Okay. down to a lighter brick in a minute.
here we have a, a sort of thing. Got most of the well, bulk of it off. I'm just going to go around the edges now, corners. And the thing is, if you do the, corner, the edges with that, it will tend to take it all off in one go. Whereas this way, I can blend it in a little bit more controlledly. But what I'm going to do now is switch to a completely different grip to finish off or to continue off the cell. Shadow up into the up into the creases here, but that's not bad because that will add a bit of character to it, give it a bit of a, a vintage feel. So what I don't want to do is take take all of that thickening of colour away. So right away now, from now I'm sort of thinking of the aesthetic of the thing. Oops, sorry, wobbles. Yeah, definitely thinking about the aesthetic look overall. slightly different levels on here so they're not sanding very evenly but still enough to leave some sort of character on there which is what they need to do obviously not quite as patchy as this it's a bit cleaner at the end but Sorry about the shaking. The aesthetic of this is going to have to be painted, i.e. stained, and part of it's going to have to be um, courtesy of the stain in the grain, stays so mainly on the grain. Um, but as you can tell, <coughs> it's not really naturally a grainy wood. It's going to suit that, so we're going to be sort of faking it a bit. By mixture of you know leaving some of this, this deliberate grunge showing for the effect, um, but that's okay. It's a hard to handle.
opened, okay. So we'll go to 100, uh, what are we on? 80, we'll go to 120 grit or something like that, whatever, 180 maybe. To bring this down and then we'll hopefully end up with some color and, and pattern or color and just, you know, texture still showing when we're doing 140 grit, which will be kind of in the zone, ready to be sanded, uh, sorry, finished. Nothing to hold still on here.
there's sort of <coughs> the basic. Um, now we can work on it more with a lighter grip. So I'll take a couple of these, or one of these pieces into the other room. Leave that there. <coughs> and we'll get ourselves some smaller pieces of a lighter grip. Oh, it's warm in here. Don't worry about the radio. No. And of course, Marine Le Pen has always been a controversial figure. She's the daughter of Jean Marine Le Marie Le Pen, who was, of course, the president of the National Front from 1972 yes. to 2011. And I see that in the last few days, uh, Macron is trying to depict her as a racist in the same way her, her father was often depicted to be a racist. It's going to work with some voters, especially on the left, who do not want to vote for Jean Luc Mélenchon because he's too extreme and who still believe that she's a, she's a racist and a fascist. She fired her father from her own party because he said he made one anti Semitic in 2015 and she's worked extremely hard to change the tenor of both of, of the sound of what they're saying and the actual platform. Um, noisy. You can see this. You can see. these things but it's a cheaper way of doing it by miles so it's worth fighting for if you can get in there Thank you. 
back to the music. Oh, that's a lovely. The world. It's got a bit of grunge in there. <laughs> Perfect to start. We've got some we've got some cake for the build on. Um. If we go too clean with this, if we go too clean with this, then it's uh, it's not going to retain any texture at all. So my view is that we stop here with this and we work the rest, the last few bits by hand, and we leave some texture in this finish. Um, we want the, we could do with the edges being a little darker than everything. No harm in that. Um, but yeah, we just not overdo this. <coughs> Otherwise. I say we'll we'll just go to a plain wood again, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so, like I say, it's going to be a mixture of uh, staining and deliberately retaining patches of stain. To give it a bit of a old weathered real look. I'm just really taking care of the major parts here, and then we'll let the two of 180 do the rest. Obviously with, with the stain, I'm going to want to use darker stain on the edge, which will kind of fit in with the <coughs> with residual dark spots anyway. But I think I'll go with the rosewood stain first, around the edges, um, and then we'll build up some amber on top. somewhere. That's normal. So if you put this on the spindle sander, fogging sander thing, you'll just take it away all in one go and take you straight back down to plain wood if you do you anything about it. So it's uh, <coughs> a bit much. Here, at least we can get a bit more of a, an organic res residue, I suppose you could say. You know, 
know, give it that slightly grubby feel. So much as it goes sparkly white underneath. <coughs> so I've got to be careful if I can be in the position of blending it. <coughs> and there are obviously, yeah, when I get there, there's really some areas that just look too dark. So you can just sort of lift those a little bit. but I don't want them to be obvious, sort of stand out a mile things. So I'm trying to just get them to gently land off into the rest of it. Just a matter of judgment and guesswork really. There we are. And pretty much close to where I think it's got to be. Obviously some bits built up there. sort of deliberately a little bit mucky with some texture in it, some, some dark in the cracks as you can see. And then <clears throat> actually fairly plain on the back because of the way the grain is and it's not terribly interesting. But you know we've got a couple of patches here that we maybe just lighten up a bit so we don't stand out too kind of crazy. 
round them off so that they don't want to blend. And I don't kind of trying to avoid it looking like it's obvious kind of deliberate painting with stain type of thing. So it's, so it's thinking like a natural relic than more like a natural relic than uh, you know, somebody somebody who's deliberately setting at it. So I would be tempted to go with that and I would start with my dark stains on the edges. I actually don't really want to sand it anymore and the reason for that is not because I don't like nice smooth wood but because if we go any sand, uh, sand anymore with this it's going to lose its remaining grain so i would be looking to uh, start staining that so give me two seconds on your own with that mate. This all right, John, just a precious time we're going to move on, but that's an interesting take then. I want to bring you up to date because the, the extraordinary murderer, Sabina Nessa, the, the primary school teacher, the sexual predator who killed her, has been jailed for at least 36 years. LBC's Lily Almond reports. Andrew, 36-year-old Kochi Selimaj travelled to London from the south coast to carry out the premeditated attack in September last year. The garage worker targeted 28-year-old Sabina Nessa and she walked through a park in Kidbrook in South East London to meet a friend in the evening. CCTV footage right. captured the moment that right. Selimaj ran up behind her and attacked her. So we... Right, so here we are. I think, I think that's not far off. Otherwise, it's a, it is a judgment call. If we don't do that, this is going to have no texture at all. Because mahogany and this Chinese-ish mahogany has not got what it takes to be textured wood. Really. Um, and actually, the truth is that these kits are made to be painted, not stained, because not, they're not really good looking enough. And the, the lines of the joints and stuff are in odd places that you wouldn't really want to see uh, you know in open wood you'd rather it'd be much better uh, you can get a more professional look if you painted this in a flat color and then finished with clear spray of some kind of top but <clears throat> we're not doing that so i'm going to investigate my world of stains So we've got rosewood, dark walnut, mm, water-based, dark walnut. Wow, what do you reckon? I reckon some dark walnut on the edge, but <coughs> we have some options here as well because we can either sort of put it on thin and a bit watered down, a bit um, thinned <coughs> and build it up. Or we could put it on quite thick and sand back a bit. Never too bad an idea to sand back a bit. It gives us quite a bit of control over um, the kind of look we're getting over time. But I think, I think, um, yeah, let's get a pot, a little container and get some water in it and see how that will look. And uh, a bit of stain. So here is. If here is if the water. Mike, let's have a look at our little fairs water-based stains. Now we're moving to water-based stains straight away. So this is quite this will be a lot of dilution. So I'm probably not going to need all of this water. <coughs> so again, this is guesswork really, there's no scientific formula. I'm going to put a few drops in to quite a bit more drops, so we'll see. We can sort of guess what kind of percentage that is enough percentage so here's a here's a sort of woody dark woody color for starters and then we can look over here and see what happens so i've got some options i've got dark woody color here 
Now, if I'm really in the mood, I could do that all over the um, guitar. But let's begin with having a look how it seats in the, the edges, maybe in the corners here. But let's begin with the edge, shall we? How you can see this. Let's have a look. Can you soak up some stuff, will you? So, yeah, mucky, quite diluted, but it's definitely got a wood colour to it, as opposed to a, um, it's not got a sort of warm rosewood, it's, a, it's definitely a, a walnut colour, it's not a bad thing. But anyway, so you can see that it preserves the grimy look underneath, which isn't bad, that's what we want. Um, helps to bring out what grain there is what textures we've made you know, worked to get into the wood um, and it's light enough that we can use this as a start and we could probably continue to add to it um, and my experience of working with stains is that it's not a huge amount of experience but <clears throat> you know you can you can keep going and keep sort of building them up and then you can also sort of mm, what would the word be you can blur them I'm thinking Photoshop but uh, you can sort of set a opacity that kind of dies off so you can kind of end up with a sunbursty feel it's quite an, I mean working with <coughs> excuse me stains and dyes is great fun so start off I'm going to do the edges and I'm going to work my way in a little bit uh, with a sort of blurry effect across away from the edges on on all sides so i just make sure i've got all of this now this looks dark at the moment because it's wet <clears throat> i can assure you but as it dries out we will lose that darkness and it will look a lot lighter so i'm not afraid to splash it all over into these crooks crooks nooks and crannies crooks and nannies okay so you can see that's actually starting to look okay I mean it's got a sort of credible look of dirt about it and you can see that I'm sort of drawing down each side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of blend that in a bit um, as we go on now I'm making this up because I don't do this very often or I've not got loads of experience in this so I'm just sort of going with my instincts and what I have done before similar so there's my darkened cr crevice cre crevices crevices Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a, a run, a bead round the edge of all of this, um, kind of just where it joins the sides. So I'm just drawing a bead for fun. Doesn't matter if it's wet. As I say, it will dry out perfectly well and you'll, it will settle, it'll become much more subtle. But I'm just joining the colorations up. And I'll do it on the other side. But first of all, what I'll do now is I'll keep the the thing uh, dry and I'll just sort of mm, thingy away from the edge a little bit. Now this is, um, it's, as you can see, it's sort of colouring in and everything, so we're giving everything a little bit. And if we don't like any of that light colouring, we can always sand it through just to give a little bit of lightness back, um, which I don't want too much liquid on there. I'm trying to just sort of blend really. Um, and you'll probably get a bit more space between the dark stuff here and the light stuff. You'll probably see more of a delineation. Um, okay. And as it dries out, as I said, it will be much, much um, lighter. Now this one, I'm going to try and keep this a bit lighter altogether. So I'm going to use as little to blend this in with as possible and then just let it fade to cleanish in the middle. There's um there's a few kind of uh, swirls here and there um, very difficult to keep them out um, particularly when you're you're using one a, a high grip to get rid of the, the stuff <coughs> and you're also and following up with a very 
a much fi a finer grip because you want to preserve the um, colouring. So no, it's it's very difficult to it's a, a choice between the two. Okay, so again, this looks dark to begin with, um, but it will uh, lighten up. So again, I'm going to come all the way around the edge with a bead to connect up with the edge. Now, what, obviously, the plan for this will be uh, to go with um, stains to get a sort of basic colour all over. Um, since it's drying quite nicely now. Yeah, staining to get colour all over, followed by um, uh, different colours of stain, obviously. Um, and then after that, we'll go with true oil, which will darken the whole thing into a really nice golden colour. So by the time we get to this very dry rubbing, we don't really have any much colour on there at all. Um, can't get any and it will rub off before we know it. Just spreading it as thinly as possible. Okay, so that's that. Now, what I'm going to do is I might put a tiny drop more. I keep the dust off here. Put a tiny drop more um, colour in here. Actually, you know what? Mm, yeah, a tiny bit more of this oh, walnut colour because I want to do another run down the edge before we finish tonight. Um, and then we'll leave the warmer colours to afterwards. So my plan for tonight would be let this dry a little bit. It's nice and mucky but we can do some more sanding as much or as little as we like. The the grain grain? The sanding brings up the grain sanding no the uh, dye stain brings the grain so we can uh, sand it a little bit finer after this and, and again we can if, if we if we lose a bit too much of the colour in the shadows that we want to retain then we can we can kind of run down there with some neat walnut or whatever. So we've got plenty of options. It's like, a, it's just like a painting. You know, once you start, once you make the first mark, then everything sort of follows from there and you can't really, can't really go wrong. Um, you can see how quickly it dries. I mean, this, this is, Barncaster is what Andrew likes. I've done it before. So it's my feeling about this is to definitely err on the side of Grubby, grubby barn, barn would find is, instead of pristine, um, you know, and that's why I'm not really too bothered about going back for the sanding swirls because, like I say, you'd have to go right back to the beginning, get everything sanded smooth, then basically you couldn't sand out with the heavy grit like I did because that would be far too dangerous. You'd have to spend a lot longer um, using. Uh, much finer grits and I'm not really sure if it would kind of give you the as much of the texture as we've got here but you know it's one way or another but I think you know at a oops at a glance we're starting to get there um, I think what I'll do is I will just try and ladle on the extra darker stuff around the edge here for now um, and then I think we can t leave it on the video side of things. So this is a double, double dark, um, double dark extra, extra brown. I mean, you know, we could we could put more on, but uh, you know, I think I'll just take it sort of easily. We're, we're not in a rush. One of the nice things about this process is once you've got a base coat that you're sort of happy with, and then you, then I'll take it home. Um, and from there, I'll work on the true oil at home and have this hanging up. And, and it's really nice because you can just, you can keep going and you can see, you can't see anything right now, sorry. You can see as I'm doing it, um, I'll be able to see when I'm doing it at home, just how the colors warming up and changing with the more and more oil that goes on. And you sort of go until you've got a thickness that you're 
content with and actually with with oil it can be as little as one coat which on a grainy body is is enough to bring out the grain and that might be all you really want it for is just to emphasize the grain or in the case of something like this we're going to there isn't that much grain to emphasize um, so kind of a primary use for it will be to um, to color the whole thing and make a, a sort of capsule around everything that's nice. Now what I'll do is I'll just put this down here for a minute and I'll just kind of I'll sort of add a bit here right on the edges again. Again just try and scuff it into a bit of a blend. But you know if the blend doesn't work the way you hope then you've don't forget you can always get a bit of sanding in there to just bring this out a little bit lighter so coming around off the edge um, always looks more grubby, dirty, darker than it actually is. Um, just, you, you can see we're building up a darker layer on the edge by you know, quite considerably darker than the rest of it, the flat surfaces. And then we can also continue sanding if we want to lighten those flat surfaces up all over again. It's interesting that I'm noticing that this water-based um, stain is kind of helping to re-spread the darker stain which I thought was a spirit well it was a spirit based stain so somehow the two of them are uh, collaborating which you wouldn't expect it's okay by me I'm not, I'm not worried but okay so there's my overall coverage so far um, so as you can see a bit darker on the side I mean, not massively all told, but this will dry out and it will suddenly look quite a bit lighter than the, the rest. And there we have the beginnings of the, the barn caster. Like I say, at the moment it, it's looking fairly dark, um, but obviously it's going to go much more like this all over when it dries out. And then we'll have a sort of sense of colour and the colour will always be f milder than than and then what it looks like as we put it on so for example um, what I might do next when this is dry is I might go put some redwood no it's called rosewood rosewood on the edge going around here um, and over onto the edge so we warm the edges up a little bit and then from there I might just go uh, cyan no that's blue Amber is the word I'm looking for. <coughs> Amber onto the flat surfaces to warm them up. And don't forget that the true oil will also warm them up. So I think I, I do like the fact we've got this three dimension that dimensionality now with this crease. I was worried about that because of the fact that it's raised, how we're we going to sand around it. But we've got sort of some, some dirty leakage here, which is quite nice around these posts. And we've definitely got these dark streaks, which which kind of blur out in a slightly mucky, sort of inconsistent way with a bit of a stripe down there and weird things happening. We've got some old sanding marks here from when the, the kit was made, saw marks actually probably. You can see they're forming a wave, but I'm not even gonna try and get rid of those because it's, it gives it its sort of barn look. Um, let me see how it all ends up. Anyway, I think that's pretty much gonna be it for tonight, other than I'll carry on doing some more of this uh, for the next hour at most, but I won't, I won't bother videoing it. It's just more of the same when this dries up and obviously these edges will take longer. I'm not even bothered by the way of getting bits of sawdust on here as you can see there, this little bit sticking on it because they'll basically come off when I re-wipe it down with the next um, colour. You know, and if it's, if when this dries out it's going too slow for my liking, then what I would do is I would take my warm at this stuff. Um, took most of it away and uh, I could throw myself in uh, more of a neat mixture and then 
while it's still wet. That's one way of doing it. I'll give you a look how we do it while we're still at it. Let's just zoom out so you can see more clearly. Uh, so while the edge is still wet, the advantage of it being wet is that it will pick up, um, it will blend new tone colour easier. So I'm going darker on the walnut, more concentrated, and I'm sort of running down there, letting that sink in. So really have got the um, you know darker edge there, which looks cool. Brightening up a bit on the sides, um, but let's add it on as we go around. So again, it sort of blends in a little bit smoother when it's wet, but obviously it's wetting up the wood a fair bit, so we've got to keep a, an eye on that. I'm not going to do it any harm, but we don't want to actually drown it if we can help it. So from fairly bland uh, Chinese mahogany, I think I would call it, it's probably the best name for it, we, we end up with um, a sort of multi-textured uh, thing. Now, again, I can just, sort of just add on to the edges here. And, you know, you can go around it quickly, like this on the edges, um, and then you can follow it up with uh, a sort of dry rub, as it were. Just rub it in a bit. Or just dust up the edge a little bit, soften the edge of the colour. And then again, if it, any of it doesn't work, we can just go back with the sandpaper and get in and kind of open out the space. So there we've got uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a nice texture going on all around. Something like that. Okay. And we can go to the other side. We'll do a round on here. Um, the thing about the true oil that I like is um, I've, when I first used it, I, I really couldn't figure it out. Um, and I probably may not even be using it correctly now, but I don't mind because I've got a sort of way of using it that I'm happy with. Um, but when I first used true oil, I couldn't seem to get it uh, past this sticky stage. Um, I, I just put it on and I just didn't like the sticky kind of thing it made. Um, didn't seem to be working for me. Anyway, so uh, I kind of get, gave it up for a while and didn't use it. And then a couple of years back, I came back to it and uh, I sort of figured out a way to use it for me. And you can, re you can read it, uh, dozens of other ways of describing how people do it. And they all vary from each other. As always, it can be quite difficult to figure out what you actually do. But what I worked out was a sort of system of once every, uh, really once every four hours applying a coat, um, maybe a, a, a very a very thick coat to begin with, um, really soaking it in. But the secret seemed to be getting the oil, wiping any excess oil off the body before um, leaving it for its three hours standing. So I would lavish the oil on, um, probably kind of wipe it all off as much as I could. So I'd have a, a thing through here and dangle this on a string. Um, and then I would, so I'd wipe all the oil onto it, get it on really thick. Um, then before hanging it, I would brush, or, um, sweep all the oil off with my cloth, the oily cloth, and then make sure there are no runs. So I'm taking off all the immediate excess. Then I'd hang it up, I'd leave it for five minutes, come back to it and just go over it, spinning it and, and just chasing out any obvious drips or build-ups that are going to cause problems. And then once I've done that, including the bottom, once I've done that, then I would leave it for three to four hours and come back and uh, have another go at it with another layer and do the same thing. Now for the first two or three layers, I wouldn't do any sanding back because one of the things they often say in these, they do it with all kinds of finishes. They'll say, spray a dusting coat on your blah, blah, blah. They might be talking about, um, I think, nitrocellulose or something. So they'll tell you to spray a dusting coat on there and then 
you'll spray it on and then before you know it the next thing they say to do is to sand it off with 600 grit now if you go at a single dusting coat of um, a single dusting coat of uh, nitro for example with 600 grit uh, 600 grit um, paper you'll take it all off in a second there'll be nothing left so I sort of ignored that part of it um, and then decided that I was going to wait until uh, we got to a good two or three coats of the stuff before doing any um, doing any sanding so that's what I do I wait so I'll do my uh, second probably third coat and then leave it overnight so I sort of coincide it with being an overnight hang up if you get what I mean hang it up overnight and then I'll leave it and um, in the morning I'll come down and the first thing I'll do for that day is I'll start with a sand out a very light sand out and I don't even use the 600 grit that they say I would use uh, I would use thousand grit and I would get a rubber block a bit like the one I've tied up here you might think what is he doing with this I'm doing this yeah so I get a thousand grit and I would get a rubber block and I would use that to um there you go that's where I'm going to hang it from I'd use a thousand grit to uh, just flatten off anything now this one um I, I would I would once I've done all the staining I want I'm going to I uh, will do a final flat sanding with very light grit just to take down any grain that's sticking up and then once I put the uh, get the true oil going it will sort of hold the grain down just gonna put this over here I think to so, should have done this earlier put a knot in here dangle it from there should be okay and voila now the next thing I'm going to do, or the last thing I'm going to do on video before I finish for tonight is we have the next issue of this little thing. Now I will get some more kitchen roll. Uh, so the question with the neck is sort of twofold really, is what the hell do we do with it stain wise? Uh, and what sort of finish would we do on it? after the stain so again some people are very keen or happy with true oil i think on this one i probably would use true oil on top of the any stain so there's a couple of things i've got to take care of on here um, somebody i was talking to online today was talking about how they they got one of these kits and they noticed that the nut slot shelf was way too uh what's the word high now i'm not going to get it out of at that with a chisel yet because what i'm not entirely sure is whether that's workable if it's workable i'm not going to change it for the sake of it but if it's not workable i'll cut down anyway the question is is what are we going to do with this neck it's, like i said it's almost no grain there's a bit of staining there that i want to try and um, sand out right now if i can um a bit of staining just one type of grit uh let's go with the Light grit, shall we? Um, yeah, so I want to stain it a thing. I want to get it clean. Um, and then I guess I will think about whether what sort of stain, because the true oil will eventually it does bring with it a golden honey colour. But um, we can help it on its way and give us the requirement, a smaller, a smaller requirement for true oil. What you don't want to do is, is turn the neck into this great big gloopy, heavily coated thing, um, if possible. 2400 Merco has changed this. I don't like this stuff near as much as I like the yellow stuff, and I haven't been able to find 240 grit in the yellow one. But there we go. Um, yeah, so I don't want too much oil on there. I don't want it to get thick and crusty. I just want to get it I want the colour right but I want it to stay very lightly finished. So I'm looking at this and it's it's taking off some of the 
the grime, grime that came. And what they've got is a floor here which they've filled or something, maybe. But they've left some kind of residue just colouring the wood where they possibly glued it or something or filled it a little bit. Again, it's not the end of the world from a plain point of view. You, you, you wouldn't really feel it uh, or anything like that. But it would uh, you know, it can look a bit on the grimy side. And that's why I wanted to just give it a little bit of a sand down before we go to the that word staining side of things. Okay, so that's as much as it's going to get clean, and that's okay. Got a bit of a grubby front headstock as well, which no doubt benefit from a light sanding. Now we're going to put on this one a Morris decal. I didn't have any uh, of Andrew's original decals. Funny enough. Not funny really. Sadly, I think I threw them away a little while back on the basis that uh, I made them for a single guitar and I didn't see that we'd ever need them again. Oh! So, unfortunately, there aren't any slasher decals and they were nice too, gold ones and everything. None of those left, so that's history. But I do have a nice Morris and the We Love Guitars thing, which we will use. And for that, I'm intending to put that, uh, well, I was going to put it, what I'll do is we'll do the staining, we'll do the true oiling. And when the true oil is fully cured, then we'll spray the front of the headstock with some uh, uh, satin nitro. And then we'll, once that's set dry, we'll apply the decal on top of that as a fixing surface. And then after that, we will uh, go over the decal with some um, final couple of coats to seal it in, uh, but just on the front of the uh, headstock. So the, the decal that's going to be in this is somewhere in here. Oh, it's on. So it's invisible itself. It was is where we going, Murray? There it is. It's uh, one of these, or a couple of combination of this one. So there's a Morris in the top hat that Andrew's had before. Um, and a really loved guitar in gold. So the black will stand out nicely on the on a lighter colour, as will the gold. So we don't want the neck anyway to be dark, as dark as the body. We want there to be a difference in the two. And I don't think trying to make light maple like this turned dark is a brilliant idea anyway. So um, my feeling about this is I will lose this last drop of, actually this is neat isn't it? This is neat so I'll just put that back in there. We'll lose this walnut and um, actually you know what I'm going to put half of the walnut away. Look at me like a chemist. I'm going to add, God I can't help myself from spilling it look. I'm going to add a dram of a dram of a wee dram of rosewood, Chunk. redder a redder look obviously than the walnut, and then I'm going to throw in some frog's legs. In this case, I'm going to throw in a bit of amber. I'm going to throw in more amber than the other two, and I think I'll want a bit of water to go in with that. Now I don't think the uh, think that the maple absorbs it very well. So this is going to be, I've done it, I've, I've stained maple before, but it, it's it's not stained the way you'd sort of imagine it, as in everything sinking in and becoming a lovely, easy take and coat. But anyway, so the thing is, we're going to go, I'm going to stain down to this line here, down the sides, um, and the stain, we can either stain over the um, the that stuff there or not? I think it's probably better to uh, to stain over, and then if we want to cut it back, we just gently scrape it back to um, the right colour that I can't think of right now. Uh, white cream, whatever it is. So let's have a feel. Look at this saffron Walden. 
Okay, so this is this is quite a quite a rich stain as it starts off. But again, once it's dry, we can sand and see what it comes out like. It just warms the wood up a little bit from its standard maple looking colour. Um, I've got to keep my in mind all the way through this that the frets are already done. So I want to treat them with respect and kindness and not damage them in any way um, because they're already leveled and polished out so ready to go okay so again first coat of or first stain we've got immediately we've got a, a, a nice sort of vintage amber color going on here and we can connect it up to the edge around up to the front and with anything, we let this dry, and then when we're in the mood, we can build it up a little bit if we want to. All right, so I'm going to keep it, if anything, the tiniest bit lighter on the front when we're all said and done, um, because I really I want that light and contrasty for the decals. So straight away, we've got our first coat on. It, it has radically changed the colour. Um, it's now no longer a sort of bland looking maple it's got a it's got some color to it and I think obviously the thing we're going to continually do although this isn't the finished object we're continually going to want to sort of come and place it or imagine placing it in cahoots with this and say so do those two things work together well so far to my eye yes they do not, a, not bad at all. The neck will end up probably being slightly warmer all around than the body, which is fine by me. Both of them will get a little warmer when they're all said and done because they'll have the true oil on them. But this won't go quite so golden because I won't be putting quite so much true oil, quite as many coats, I don't think anyway. Um, so another approach I might have I've taken in the past with next like this is to use water-based um, poly and I've used water-based wipe on poly in the past it's been fantastic um, very difficult to buy the particular kind here it's Minwax that I've used but um, there are a lot of people in the forums that say teach you how to make your own wipe on rub on polyurethane and um, pointing out that it's basically thinned, um, thinned down uh, poly regular poly so um, I'm sure it's worth doing lots of experiments but I'll show you the one I use if I can remember um, it's this one I'm not doing it on this one because it takes a fair bit long well, no, no I want to do this and I want to do the neck and the body together on the same material and the same production line but this is what I've used before what min wax water based water based the important thing wipe on poly this makes fantastic guitar neck finishes for my liking. Um, I, if I wanted to do a body, I would probably do, um, I would try and spray on a water-based finish, um, which I've got, or oh, I need to buy some more for the spraying season. But, um, but for, certainly for necks, I've had nothing but good results with those, uh, with that Minwax stuff. For some reason, it's incredibly forgiving and easy to use. I can put it on, I can, I can, you know, wait 20 minutes, put the next coat on, put the next coat on, just keep going. Um, and you can, over three or four days, you can make a beautifully thick, solid, protective capsule for a plain neck. And uh, it will last for years. And I've got, I've got ones that are, are still going and I just, every time I pick them up, they're about maybe five years old or something. And every time I pick them up, I just love how they feel. Okay, so look, we've got we've got quite a lot of yellow going on in there. Um, I look at this and I think if we're going to do one more before I stop doing this and uh, tidy up, it's looking a little bit cyan-y. So I might consider dropping a, a little handful more rosewood in here for this time round um, and see what that does for me. Now this sort of stuff, I ought to have a witch's brew type of pot because by the time I finish doing this, I've always got some leftover that I should use again. Um, but, you know, that's 
can change the colour as we go along. Um, it won't do anyone any harm at all. So let's try a bit more with a bit more rosewood in there. So all that does really is darkens this saffron down a little bit, which isn't a bad thing, because again, when I sand it back, it'll take off some of this uh, colour as well. Now, I might just choose to leave the front of the headstock, in this case, the way it is, um, and maybe not even do anything more to it. So I'm getting the, you know, taking the body a little darker, sorry, the neck, length of the neck a little darker, and and letting the front of the headstock stay kind of where it is. But for that, I'm just, I think I've got to be careful not to overrun. So I quite like this color here now, that's not bad. I think that was about as dark as I want to go. All right, may, keep in mind that it will, it will look lighter when it's dried. So now I'm gonna just run down here and I'm going to do my best to avoid sort of bleed over. I can see where they've got glue spilt down the, the uh, front of, or down by the, the original nut, they've spilt some glue because it's, it's stopping the, damn, I've run over the top, I've gone the wrong side, idiot. Um, gosh. Um, yeah, so they, they've, they've kind of impregnated the wood with a little bit of super glue there, which is stopping the dye stain sinking in as much as I'd like. Okay, well, we've, it's, it's run slightly over the front, but it's, it's sort of softening the edge. Nobody would know if we just do a little bit of that and all that. Da, blend, blend in. It's blend in, mate. Okay, so there we have it. Quite nice, a sort of goldeny wood colour. Golden wood. See that little bit of resisting? Uh, it's small enough not to panic about it, but kind of thing that you find out at this stage and then you have a choice what on earth you do with it and it may be that you have to go back and uh, sand everything back to get rid of that blemish but I think it's minimal here so I'm not going to do that I'm just going to add a bit more to here I think that's going to be the my end of my sanding in truth by the time we get this done that's hardly a change to the color and we probably could comfortably leave that uh, the colour it is right now. Um, if, on the other hand, when we came to, uh, you know, if, by the time we've put all the, uh, done the true oil, if we don't like the colour it's got there, then we can you know, scrape it back. But actually, if I take a bit of the main kind of wet dye off there now, and then we kind of imagine it a little bit down the line with some true oil, I think that would be perfectly fine colour. All right, hope you enjoyed that little run through um, on this uh, kit that we're sort of doing from end to end because um, people seem to be enjoying the, you know, every stage of the, the grizzly process. So you can see we've got that on that side, that on that side, lighter, darker, let's contrast. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I think I probably find somewhere to hang this up too. A bit of string would be the right way. And I'll see you for the next one which I think what might be a bit more staining stuff um, and uh, along the way, a bit more staining tomorrow maybe, and we'll see where we go. Um, I was hoping, what I'd like to do ideally is get these home tomorrow to, to start up the true oil machine. I don't see really any reason why not. That, that's probably ready to go almost there. This one might just need a bit more um, in fact, I, I could put on the, what have we got here? We've got a nice warm cyan, no, that's the word. I keep saying cyan, it's the wrong word. We've got a nice warm amber coat there. I think I'll use this stuff to go all over that. In fact, why don't I do it now while you're with me? I know I haven't waited for the entire thing to dry, but let's just, let's get, change the color a bit before we, before we put this to bed for the night. So we'll go around the edge. Oh, need another bit of stuff. We'll go around the edge, but we'll, we'll also go over the flat surfaces in full. So, right, promise this is the last stain for the day. Okay, this is my custom made cocktail of rosewood, amber, and the other thing. Walnut. Uh, we've, got, we've got a drip. Not really what you want to do because drips can show up a bit much. So we'll try and start 
keep it to the edges for the beginning sir so that immediately warms up the color which I like um, and again it, with everything I, my only advice really is when you're doing this is just bear in, keep in mind that everything goes dark when you put the stain on so everything looks disproportionately dark and you kind of you often when you're doing it for the first time you can suddenly go oh my god that's not what I'm aiming for and get really panicked um, but just bear in mind that it, it lightens up and when you sand it if and when you sand it you can relieve it of its heavy color each time um, and then you can go back and build up more if you if you want and the other bit of advice I suppose would be to when you start it when you start having your dyes and stains um, start out with uh, watered down stains if you're nervous about where it's going to go to um, and start out with concentrated stuff just uh, get going with watery stuff that will darken too but it will also um, it'll also dry much lighter than you'd expect and that way you could just translate sort of time extra time spent putting on more layers or more washes time for safety and, and control of the process if you're feeling un uh, nervous about it when you're doing it for the first time it's always a good that's always a good beginner's um, trick is do I always recommend slowing it down so turning it into in whatever way you can um, slow it down so for example with the fret leveling that turn that translates into uh, if you can slow it down put much finer grit onto the um, onto the tool so that you're not taking so much and that way you'll get much uh, take it will take you longer but you'll have much more leeway and mistakes won't uh, front you or come up, come up on you so too quickly so there's my nice dark um, channel you can see how much warmer this now looks as well with this mix. Very nice. Again, the, keep in mind that the uh, true oil ultimately will add honey colour as well. So we're getting it started with this. We can afford to sand a lot of it back off if we need to as this dries. I'll probably get some rust in there now having put stain into the the um, posts but hey uh, yeah so we'll we'll we've got room to sand this back if we want to i think it will be good to do it at the end of this because we we can then sort of tame the hackles of the grain a little bit before we start applying the true oil so that by definition can allow us to take up some of the color and thin out some patches and it gives us a bit more of an artist's brush approach um, and then once we've got it, you know, sort of tweaked to the contrasts we like, we can then go to the true oil and concentrate on building that up and keeping an eye on the sort of the depth of the golden colour that comes with the true oil. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's just pick this up, rub that down, make sure there's no dust on it now. And we can hang this back up, and that's my... That's my staining for the night. What do you think? Yum, yum, yum. Again, it'll dry, get lighter. We'll sand it, it'll be a bit lighter. And then we'll get going with the true oil sometime pretty soon. So thank you for watching. Lovely. Um, I know Andrew likes to me to document the build with stills so you can do things and make a video so we don't really want Henry in this picture but we do want some stills showing the I guess the nice contrasty bit okay stop spinning ready to get a still oh, where's the thing right still <laughs> I'm going to go side on. That's it.
that's it, baby. Playful, yeah, smile at me. Right. Angry, you hate me. Right, it's a wrap.